Another question, please. Yes, ma'am. What made you change from stage work to film work? Laziness. Being a theater actor means I have to hit the gym every day. Um, I have to make sure my memory is always intact. It's a brutal business, you know. Then I discovered when I, I ended up working on a couple of films in Dallas, one of my first films here was called Eight Seconds. That was the film that got me started as a union actor here in San Antonio was with Luke Perry. Uh, the story of Lane Frost, who's a great champion bullfighter. Got paid really good money for four days and didn't have to do anything. I went, whoa, this is kind of cool. Got lucky enough to go to Austin and, 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 and move to Dallas and work on Walker, Texas Ranger again you know, got to play Indian and didn't have to break a sweat and got paid really well. So what really did it, I always venture and pretend like one day I'll go back to theater, but that would probably mean me losing 20 pounds and not eating and drinking the things I like to eat and drink. Um, but laziness, yeah, not too proud to say it. Another question, yes, sir. So out of all the things you've done, what has been the most that, that you've enjoyed, like theater or music or film? Wow. Um, <clears throat> just because in my state of age and my lack of beauty, I have to kiss ass. So King of the Hill, I would say, has been one of my favorite things I have done for the reason that it's known, it's a piece of history, it's changed the way people look at Native Americans a little bit good and bad. <laughs> um, my second best would probably be part of Larry McMurtry's uh, Lonesome Dove series, Comanche Moon, Dead Man's Walk. Larry McMurtry is a great war writer. I think he's one of the, you know, read his writing. The movies, you don't get it. Watch and read his writings, they're amazing. That would be my second favorite. And then of course, coming off of Parks and Recreation right now is just gonna be a lot of fun. His characters, you know, the Indian and a goofball at the same time. Hopefully it won't get me in trouble. Good question, though. Next, please. Anyone else? What else? What else? Um, yes. Why did you to start your music career? Wow. <laughs> um, laziness. <laughs> laziness. Um, a lot of comes out of being lazy, folks. Don't let it completely get the bad rap. You know, just because you're lazy doesn't mean you sleep all day long. Um, I was in the right place at the right time. It's like someone once said that 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 you know. To, to achieve greatness or to be successful. It's about opportunity and preparation. When the opportunity arises, be prepared for it. That equals success. Um, I have a boat, Marina Del Rey. Everybody's either an unemployed actor or unemployed musician in LA, so I had around me at the right time. And it was just an expression. I got tired of King of the Hill, have John Redcorn jumping in and out of the window. And you just couldn't go to Fox and say, I want to do something differently. I had to show them that a little bit of who I thought Redcorn was. So with the help, with the help of, of, of friends, I was able to put a band together and, and just do some really goofy things. Took one CD, which was the first CD, was called uh, uh, John Redcorn Big Not Fudge Cake Golden Driblets. That was the first one that we actually recorded on a boat, a 30-foot boat. We hung mics in there and had a little DAT player, if you're familiar with sounds and equipment. This little bitty player, we did it all in one track, recorded it in two hours. That's what I took to King of the Hill, and they really liked it. And I liked the idea that John Redcorn had a career other than you know, what he did on the show. Um, plus, it's a lot of fun being John Redcorn. I really like the character. It allows me to do things that I Jonathan Joss couldn't do. Um, and it kind of stuck. You know, we won an award in 19, 2008, not 19, 2008, Best Producer at the Native American Music Awards in Amis. So that kind of put it out there with the whole Native American alternative blues. I thought it was a nice, long, wordy, 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 uh, wordy thing to say. I could hear John Ray going, you know, in it's alternative Native American blues. He really likes it. Um, <laughs> So every once in a while, yeah, that did do the voice. Yeah. I'll wait for that question. So basically what made me do it is that, you know, to be an actor, to be an artist, you gotta be creative. Whatever outlet you can do. And since I can't sing, I thought, what better thing to do than pretend? Yeah. Okay, another question, please. Yes, ma'am. 
the transition from you going to Austin and then having the dream to go to LA, how was that where you like your feeling wise, were you nervous, scared? Did you plan it out or it just kind of fell in your lap? <laughs> um, very scary. Um, <clears throat> for the point that I had been in Austin and had been in Dallas for so long, had great representation in Dallas. I had done several Walker, Texas Rangers. I was doing a Sally's Beauty uh, industrial stuff where I talked about Sure, you know, uh, you know, when skewing the fra when skewing the combs on the shelf, be sure to place the price mark to the left of each item. Doing things like that, making great money in Dallas, but were, was not getting the auditions that I thought I could get if I was in LA. Um, so very scary, I packed up my truck, came back through San Antonio, kissed my mom goodbye, got to LA, and went, wow, this is where you sell your soul. But you can buy it back. It's like a pawn shop for your soul. So it's very scary. You know, I, like I said, I just came back and it, it takes a while to get into transition because California is such a boulevard of broken dreams. You know, you'll see somebody doing great one day and, and then the next day, you know, they're sleeping under a tree. It's crazy. I'm more scared about coming back than going there because I'm so afraid that I'm a different person since I've been out there. Yes, um, how are your parents as far as being told I want to be an actor, I want to go to LA? What did they say? Oh, wow. My mom, I used to, people would leave hats and coats at the restaurant. We had an office where we put everything. And I would get so tired of waiting tables and washing dishes, I'd had to do an escape. So I'd throw on all these different items I'd find and people leave at the restaurant and I'd develop all these characters. So I think, you know, that and my sixth grade teacher saying that my mouth is too big and I wasn't listening in class, maybe I should go to theater, you know, they were fine with it. No, no problem. They were always very supportive. My dad was my biggest fan. You know, um, not a problem at all. Not a problem at all. Next question. Yes. Your first generation of college student or no, um, no. Uh, my brother graduated from St. Mary's. Yeah, he's now works for ATF. That would be alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. I'm the loser of the family. Yes. Um, you say that um, some roles have gotten you in trouble. Like, do you say in trouble with the Native American community or your family? In regard to this shoot? Well, within in the past. In the past? Um, yeah, man. I, I kind of stand up. It, it, not trouble with family, just producers. I stand up for what I believe in. Um, sometimes Hollywood has a misunderstanding about the Native American ideas and rituals uh, that we do and why we do them. Very simple. Theater background. You don't use a real Bible on stage. Very simple. So we as Native Americans prefer not to do traditional things on film. You don't use real money on television. We prefer that you don't do real stuff um, on film. Has Hollywood changed? Yes. For example, on his last shoot, they brought me a little prayer bag that usually has tobacco, sage, sweetgrass, things that are spiritual to Native people. They handed me this big bundle, and I said, oh shit, you know. Ah! I open it, and when I open it, the lady comes over to the prop master and says, don't worry, it's tea, oregano, and uh, cinnamon sticks. I went, wow, somebody did their homework. Someone knew not to hand me tobacco. Had they handed me tobacco, I would have said, you know what, guys, I'm really sorry. I'm not allowed to do this. Well, what, it's only tobacco, old people smoke all the time. Well, no, for us, it's part of our ceremony, it's part of how we pray. We can't do it with tobacco. I was crazy impressed that they handed me tea. I loved it, you know. Um, things like that, you know, King of the Hill one time, I had a, a line that I had to say where John Redcorn had a psychiatrist. My friend, the psychiatrist, says that dreams are, I'm not sure if they used the line or not, but I refused to say it. Got in trouble with producers. You know, because it was a producer's line. We can't change stuff. We can't do it. We won't do it. I can say my friend's a psychiatrist, but I can't say the psychiatrist. Things like that, what I mean is kind of in trouble and kind of standing up for myself at the wrong time. We as young people um, sometimes take the wrong approach uh, to asking people how to make change. You know, sometimes you have to ask and not tell. Sometimes you gotta ask 50 times, you know, instead of telling them. 